Up the long stairs he stumbled, the heavy pail dripping and splashing over the brim. You are a good boy, Ludwig, and a fine help to your mother, said Frau Beethoven, gently patting the dark, tousled head. Ludwig smiled happily and ran swiftly to his hiding place in the window seat nearby to curl himself up very small. Now he could be alone by himself. If he pressed his face close to the window pane, he could watch the children romping gaily in the garden below, or he could look over the housetops and away to the mountains beyond and dream strange dreams of faraway lands. Wonderful melodies crept into his mind and sang to him gently as the hours rolled by and darkness fell softly over the hilltops. Suddenly, the sound of bells stole out upon the evening air. The carillon! Nothing in all the world did he love as much as the chiming bells. Whenever he was lonely or whenever he was sad, the ringing bells comforted him and made him happy again. Now they were chiming more joyously than ever, and like a flash, Ludwig ran down the back stairs and on to the palace. Standing beside the high tower, he listened breathlessly as the old, fine bells played their glorious melodies for him. When the last sweet chimes had died away, he sighed happily and crept back through the darkened streets to his home. One morning, Mother Beethoven wakened the household earlier than usual. Come, Ludwig, today we move to a new home where your father can be nearer his work. You may help carry the boxes to the Rheingasse. How glad Ludwig was to live on the riverfront, where he could watch the barges and boats go sailing by his very door. And best of all was the old red ferry, the flying bridge swinging like a pendulum from shore to shore, busily carrying its passengers across the swiftly flowing waters. But there was little time on the Rheingasse, for it was time to move again, this time to a smaller house just across from the palace where Father Beethoven could still be nearer to his work. Ludwig was delighted, for now he was closer than ever to his beloved Carillon. Just as the twilight stole over the city, he ran to the window to watch the beautiful bells turning and swinging as they played their melodies for him. The old neighbors from the Von Gasse soon found their way to the new home with their instruments, for they could never do without their concerts. One evening, as Father Beethoven carefully tuned his violin, he looked up to find Ludwig watching longingly. You may play the easy parts with us tonight, my son, but mind that there are no mistakes. To play with the men, Ludwig ran to find his instrument and was soon in his place, his dark eyes shining. The music began, and proudly he drew the short bow across the strings, watching the notes very carefully so that he would be sure to keep up with the men. Harry smiled at the serious little violinist at his side. Well done, my little man, he applauded, as the small musician put down his bow. When the concert was over and the stands were put away, the neighbors left for their homes, and soon the Beethoven household was quiet for the night. Suddenly, the sound of bells rang through the house, waking Ludwig from a sound sleep. Yes, it was the carillon, but why was it ringing at this hour of the night? Springing from his bed, he ran to the window, and there was the bell tower, with tongues of fire leaping from every side. Father, mother, the bells are burning, the beautiful bells. Down to the street, he ran to watch the fire that raged and roared through the long night hours, making the sky as bright as day. Higher and higher leaped the flames, and just as the bells began to play in the early dawn, they fell to the ground with a mighty crash. Ludwig watched in horror as the tears crept down his cheeks. His beautiful bells were gone. They would never play for him again. Here's the picture. Now that he was seven years old, Ludwig started school where he learned to read and to write Latin and to do simple sums in arithmetic. But the lessons were very long, and he was glad when it was time to leave so that he could play marbles with the boys on his way home. But more than anything else, he loved to fly his kite, his homemade kite, from the top of the hill when the wind was high. He liked to feel it tug and pull at the string in his hand as it soared far above his head. 
almost to the clouds. In the Beethoven home, times were very difficult these days, for Father Beethoven earned very little money, and soon pieces of silver and furniture were taken away to be sold so that they would have food to eat. But there was never enough. And at night, when he went to bed, Ludwig tried hard not to think about the empty feeling inside him. Mother Beethoven was sad as she went about her household tasks, struggling from early morning until late at night, trying to keep Ludwig and his two smaller brothers neat and clean. And now, Ludwig spent even longer hours at his practicing. If only there was some way that he could help so that Mother Beethoven would not have to work so hard. One morning, after a long lesson at the piano, Father Beethoven turned to his son. At last you are ready, Ludwig. It is time for you to play for the people of Bonn. To give his first concert? Ludwig's eyes grew bright with eagerness. Every evening from then on, he sat at the old worn piano to play his pieces for the good neighbors who came to hear him, so that he would be sure to play well at the palace. At last the special day arrived, and Ludwig put on his splendid costume of a fine green tailcoat with a vest of flowered satin, knee breeches, and shoes with polished buckles and a pigtail of real hair. Mother Beethoven looked proudly at her son. Goodbye, my Ludwig. Do the best that you can, and surely you will bring us honor this day. Ludwig strode away to the palace with Father Beethoven, and when the great hall was quiet, he bowed solemnly, and seating himself at the piano, began to play. Here's a picture of him walking to the palace. His strong fingers flew over the keys with such power that the people sat up in wonder. This young boy was gifted indeed. When the concert was over, the people clapped their hands and shouted, Bravo, bravo, and they would not leave the hall until Ludwig sat down to play his pieces again. Father Beethoven was pleased, and Ludwig was happy as they walked home in the early twilight. Here's the picture of his concert. Now you must have a new master, my son, for you have learned all that I can teach you. Perhaps Herr Pfeiffer will work with you now. Herr Pfeiffer? He was a very fine musician, but a stern taskmaster indeed. As soon as Ludwig began to work with the new teacher who had just come to the Beethovens to live, there were lessons at any time of the day or night. Often, long after Ludwig had been in bed and asleep, Herr Pfeiffer shook him awake and leading him to the piano, kept him at his practicing until the morning light found its way into the low, dark cottage. Sometimes when the lesson went well, Herr Pfeiffer took out his silver flute and played lovely melodies for his pupil. And when Ludwig turned to the piano to make up an accompaniment, his teacher was pleased indeed. Out in the street, the people gathered around the open doorway to listen to the beautiful concert on went the variations, until at last Herr Pfeiffer put down his flute. Now, Ludwig, you must sit here at the table and write this music that we have played together. But that I cannot do, Herr Pfeiffer, for I do not know the rules for writing music. Then there is no better time to learn. Come, I will teach you at once. The lesson began, and after he had carefully explained some rules of the music, Herr Pfeiffer started to leave for the theater. See to it that the music is finished when I return, young man. Poor Ludwig, the day had already been long and hard, and he was weary. He bent over the paper and tried to write, but the notes would not come. It was no use. Putting down his pen, he stumbled off to bed. The hours rolled by, and on he slept. Suddenly, in the middle of the night, someone shook him awake, calling loudly in his ear, Come, you lazy rascal, up with you and finish the work that I left for you to do. Half asleep, Ludwig sat again at the table. Herr Pfeiffer came close beside him and slowly the notes went down on the paper. Through the long night hours he struggled many times, falling sound asleep, his head resting heavily on his arms. But always the thundering voice of his stern taskmaster brought him quickly back to his work. Slowly the darkness began to fade, and Herr Pfeiffer went off to bed, leaving his weary pupil to finish the last bit of writing. Daddy. 
The warm red glow of the rising sun crept in at the window as Ludwig turned to play the piece that he had written. Suddenly he paused and a smile lighted on his face. He would play the music in his own way, instead, just as it sang itself in his mind. Here's a picture of him working late at night. He looks so tired. Putting his hands on the keys, strong, ringing chords came from the instrument and sounded to every corner of the house. On and on went the music, rising and falling in the singing melody. Father Beethoven, awakened by the sound, hurried to his friend, Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer, only listen, it is our Ludwig who plays. Yes, Johann, we have taught him well. It is good, we started him early. Mother Beethoven, busy with her cooking in the kitchen below, stopped her work to listen. Tears of joy filled her tired eyes. All is well, she whispered softly. The boy has music in his heart. Here he is playing his music. Father Beethoven hurried down to the kitchen. Wife, there will be no more school for our Ludwig. From this day on, he shall spend all his time in music. But he is so young, Johann, only 11. It is no matter. The boy will become a great musician, Maria. And he hurried away to speak to his son. Ludwig it is time for you to play for the people of another country. Our friends are returning to their homes in Holland and you and your mother will go with them and you will give a concert for the Dutch people and perhaps make a name for yourself like the boy Mozart. To go away to Holland? It seemed like a dream. Ludwig turned eagerly to his father and when do we start? In three days, when the boat will sail from the pier there will be just time to make ready for the journey. Here's the boat. So that's the end of chapter one. I'm wondering if there's anything that surprised you about this part of the story or anything you wonder about. Something I wonder about is if he enjoyed practicing such long hours. Maybe it was difficult, but maybe over time he started to really enjoy it. I don't know. I wonder what kinds of things do you wonder about? You can let me know or talk with your family about it, and we'll, we'll start chapter two next time. I'll see you then.